let's do this thing, Ema Bobber. Hello, this is kind of informal. I usually don't film this late in the evening. It's 7.10 right now. I've, I only either film like really late at night or like in the early afternoon. So excuse me if the lighting's kind of weird, I don't know. What is this video about? I was just watching the footage back from a video that I recorded earlier. It was a planned video, but then I started thinking about like, I, I don't want to only do planned videos, so I want to be honest with you guys also. And um, with the end of the school year coming up, I thought it would be good for me to, you know, kind of reflect on the uglier parts of it. Uh, freshman year was really crazy. It is still really crazy, and I only have three weeks left, but it's like everything is coming to like a hoop, and I'm like hoop, and everybody around me is like hoop. So I've changed a lot this year. I remember when I first got here, I had absolutely no idea what to expect. I This is my first time living with people that I didn't know. This was my first time, you know, not having a cat. My first time not having my mom's food every night. So, like, everybody knows, like, la la la, that part's gonna be different. This has been a year, okay? <laughs> it's been a year. Because I'm surrounded by so many people that I didn't grow up with and so many people from so many different parts of the world. You know, I feel like I have a wider perspective now so that I can talk to a camera on the internet, I guess. <laughs> Let's talk about last semester. So I arrived at college and it was just like, okay, I only have five classes now. So I thought that it would be hashtag easy because in high school we had seven classes every day. I think last semester was just really crazy because of the adjusting. I was so used to being not, not like the best, but in my English class, for example, I never had to try because I knew that Everyone else around me would kind of perform lesser, I guess. Like, English is my thing, okay? I'm just gonna say it. I'm sorry. I wasn't used to having to try so freaking hard. So, my grades were good last semester. It kind of started out like, okay, I had all A's and I was psyched. I was like, oh, college is easy. This is gonna be a blast. And then my classes got hard. <laughs> like, it's the threshold where you don't realize how hard your classes are. And then when the workload starts to, like, bunch up around midterms, and then you're like, oh, so this is this is what the class is about. It's not like my grades tanked or anything. I just like uh, my I got a B. I think I think I got one B, and I was pretty upset about that because it brought my GPA down to 3.8. Yes, I know, I know. I just really like the way that a four and zero. It's like. It's, it's sexy, okay? It looks good together. I was struggling a little bit last semester, but then again, I was kind of making friends at the same time. I met great people, like my friend Maya, my friend Jalissa, and stuff like that, and I really only got close to a couple people. It was full of experimentation. I went to some parties. I've gone to exactly two parties this year, and they sucked. They're so dumb. Do you want to know why they're dumb? Because this is not a party school. This is a liberal arts college with like 2,500 kids in it. And when they try to mimic, you know, like the style of a party school, it just looks like a joke because we're going to the same houses, like within walking distance of campus every weekend with your smelly couches in these houses. Like, okay, okay, okay. People at my school, they go to parties in these, like the soccer house or like, you know, like different like parts of the education. Like they have like, different houses for like different sports or whatever it's just like they all live together or like theater house and stuff like that there's different houses and so everybody goes to like the soccer house and they have these dusty ass couches with like one piece of art on the wall jam-packed because of course with like 2500 kids going to one school there's only like one party every weekend it's just ridiculous and everybody smells and no one's happy it's just like a really trying nasty time. <laughs> oh, whoa. I just got a text from a from an ex tender date. What is going on? What the fuck? Okay, anyways, sorry, I'm getting distracted. On God's green earth, what is happening? Okay, <sighs> where was I? The parties are stinky. First semester full of experimentation, full of just like mistakes and like figuring it out step by step. I can't tell you how many times I just wanted to cry my little, my little pants off, but, and I did sometimes. I had a cliche college breakup, can we talk about that? This is going so out of order, you guys, but there was so much that happened and as, as soon as I got out of that breakup, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go on Tinder dates. And then soon enough, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Europe. And I was just like on this like bullshit tour of like how many things can Elise do that she's never done before in five seconds. Um, I think I was just ready for like anything. Um, and now I feel like an old weathered woman who has done everything in the book. So I'm really enjoying this paper cup because it's like really flimsy, which means that there's not any, or maybe it's just like a really light lining on the inside. So it's not like full of BPA. 
love that. Get educated on your chemicals, guys. So that was last semester. I finished the quarter with a quarter, sweetie. It's a semester. I finished the semester with a GPA of 3.8. You know, I was proud of that. I was like, okay, 3.8, that's not bad for, you know, someone transitioning into a whole different type of schooling. Then I went to Europe because I did that like bull on the bullshit tour I was talking to you about. That was part of the impulsiveness and I went to Europe for a month. I stayed in Portugal and Spain and so I was like, you know, so happy with all that alone time because I traveled alone and I came back and I was ready for like this whole clean slate and I was just ready to, you know, focus on myself this semester because I was very disappointed about the 3.8, as silly as that sounds. I really did want to have like a better GPA than that and I wanted to hold myself to a higher standard like no matter like what the conventional definition of like a good student is. So I came like with the strap. I was ready to like you know blicky all my classes and I have been for the most part but we'll get back to that later. For the most part I do like my classes better this semester it's just that I have six instead of five and I have a new job this semester because I got my job as a lab assistant. I've been going through the trials of you know scheduling being punctual, not taking spontaneous naps, even though I still do that, it's like contained chaos, like, you know, so. But I pretty much am booked for most of the week. I'm in classes for 15 hours a week. I work seven hours a week because that's the maximum. It's been hard, you know, I've kind of thrown my social life away. And that's hard to talk about a little bit because it reminds me of like sometimes how little of a support system I feel like I have. I don't want to like get into the nitty gritty or anything, but like friends that I was closer to last semester, like one of them moved away back to her home state. Some of the other ones have reached out to me and been like, why are you not hanging out with us as much? Just because like, you know, I have been more focused on keeping my grades up and pursuing my goals and like my interests you know not getting caught up in like staying up to watch tv or like i don't even what was i doing last semester i don't even know partake in things if you get what i mean so <laughs> that was truly like the trial by fire last semester but now i'm i was like focused and trying to stay away from the things that i knew made me perform weaker in my classes so i feel like when people take that as like a personal not like an attack but like it's a personal statement as if i don't want to see them or if I don't want to hang out with them or anything, um, I feel like it would come off as like pompous being like, oh, I'm focusing on me, you know, but it's like, I need to do that sometimes. With all the change that happened and with the results of last semester, I was like, it's time for me to shut myself in and it's time for me to just, you know, duke it out with myself and see how far I can go and what is like my new threshold for what I can do. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm talking kind of like one of those Instagram entrepreneurs that's just like no more sad shit, boss up, I'm doing me, I don't go to parties, but let's face it. So I'm talking about um, freshman year. If you could sum up freshman year in one, one short spiel. Lots of fun, but also really fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm kind of trying to describe here. It's hard. Uh, can we talk about boys? I want to talk about boys. Because that was such a weird experience. Like, I did, I had no idea what I was doing. Okay, so we start with the cliche college breakup that happened in, like, early September. And that was freaking crazy. Because it dragged on, and he made me beat that dead horse till it was begging for his damn life. Yeah, and immediately after that, I jumped right in. Because I was like... Oh, Tinder. I've never done that before. It's That'll be great, right? And so I did that for like maybe a month or two, which is so... <sighs> I just don't even know what to say about that. Girl, like I've been debating... Okay, no, everyone's gonna attack me. But I've been debating if I even believe in monogamy for like the longest time. It just feels like a trap, sweetie. Since then, I feel like <laughs> that was... It was like everything was kind of, you know, just normal or average. And then that was just like, whoa, WWE Smackdown. I'm not dealing with boys for the rest of the year. The point is that boys are pointless, especially in your freshman year. It's like, I had to figure out what I was doing and what my priorities were, but I don't want to like factor anybody else into that because it's supposed to be about me. Maybe two or three years down the line, sure. Um, are guys going to be any less annoying in two or three years? Probably not, so it's really up to them. So. Elise, how's your semester been going? Well, thanks for asking. Freaking crazy, my friend. My comm professor hates me. That's all I have to say, because I have a B in that class right now, and if I end up getting a 3.8 again, I just might cut my hands off. Due to lack of social life, due to discipline, and no foreign substances entering my body. But so now we're standing with all A's except for the one B, and I think that, you know, with the fact that I am working and pursuing my creative interests more, 
and you know putting more devotion into my language like my polyglot study i'm i'm okay with that and it's a high b too so when i talk about creative interests what is that's just like such a broad umbrella but also with my language study for the longest time i felt kind of inadequate like a large amount of people know that i speak a lot of languages or that i have experience in a lot of languages and so that kind of becomes attached to me sound effects. When people want to introduce me to people or something like that, that usually comes up at some point. Oh, she speaks all these languages, it's so cool. But then I'm just like kind of dying inside because I know that it's not up to the standard of what I want. I'm just standing there, I'm like, oh my god, if someone approached me right now and was speaking in like fluent German, I would, I'd crumble. I'd be like a little pixie stick or something like that. It kind of incites fear and I didn't, for the longest time, I didn't want anything that I was passionate about to make me feel inadequate. And so I just spent such a long time feeling sorry for myself, and I was like, Elise, oh my god, you have no motivation. And I realized, what the hell is motivation? Fear is motivation. It could be a, f a form of motivation. I've kind of put myself at the forefront of my fears. Like, it's easy to say that I'm, like, mending, what's it called? Tending to my, <coughs> tending to something. I don't, idioms don't do well today. Tending to my farm, I guess. Let's call it a farm. If I take a Spanish class, and if I'm taking an ASL class, and I'm having someone serve, language to me but how easy is that you know it takes real discipline to kind of put myself at the forefront of like German every week or starting a, an Eastern language because I put that on my resolution so I was originally gonna do Japanese but now we're doing Korean and also not neglecting Portuguese because after I went to Portugal it was like oh catharsis and I got to practice it a lot and then I got back and I was like my pen pal's not talking to me as much and I don't have you know locals that I can interact with and talk in Portuguese to every day so it's like this is just gonna wither away. You have to make like an active decision to, an active decision to be active. It's, that's redundant, but whatever, sweetie. So it's easy to say, okay, I'm gonna practice these three, but putting it into practice and being disciplined about it is a whole other thing. I tend to want to stick to the one that's easiest because Portuguese, it just melts like in my freaking mouth. It's like so easy, it melts in your hands. German could be easier, Korean, learning an entirely different alphabet, I started to feel inadequate because I'm like, okay, it's been like three weeks and I can only introduce myself. But then I have to remember that, okay, it's a whole different alphabet too. It's a whole different alphabet. Some of the sounds that exist in Korean don't even exist in English. So it's like, there's a big gap. So I'm not stressing too much about it anymore. As for like new study plan, I was torn. I was like, should I, you know, focus on one per month? Like do a German month, Korean month, or Portuguese month? Or should I just, you know, like have two German days a week, two Korean days a week, two Portuguese days a week, and then a day off? And so I was kind of like, flipping between that plan for a while, but then I realized I'm just gonna do it like one language per week. Portuguese week ended just now, and today it was the start of German. Yeah, I feel like that's a way better plan because it going every day and switching every day, it just felt like chaotic and I felt like I was getting mixed up. It wasn't good, Chief. So yeah, I don't know why I got on that tangent. I just wanted to mention it because I feel like setting myself up to have that kind of reputation or like to people know have people know me for that, it kind of also didn't set me up for failure, but it set me up for like fear and like, you know, just that kind of state of mind. So what happened last semester, my classes suddenly got hard and I couldn't adjust. But now I've been waiting all semester for my classes to get hard. And I'm like, oh wait, the classes aren't going to get hard. I'm just going to finish the semester with A's. And I was thinking about it like a week ago. And I was like, okay, I'm waiting for my classes to get hard. I was like, I really, you know, I'm like not looking forward to that. And I was like, oh, we only have a month left. I'm fucking out of here. I was like, okay, cool. And then I'm off to Mexico and I get to just detox and like de-stress and not wake up in this miserable ass twin extra large bed every day in a dorm room that has termites and like ghosts and mold probably ghouls probably ghouls i don't even know you know this building's 130 years old that's what they told me in the email they're like hey we can't treat the entire building for termites because it's 130 years old we can only spot check problem areas this whole damn place is a is a, is a problem area sheila keep in mind that I, I sent that to my president the president of my college and he forwarded it to some other lady and she's like he asked that i respond on his behalf so coward can i add something about how shitty this school is of course please Okay. Hi guys. I'm Callie. She's Callie. I'm the, I'm the roommate. Number one. We have yeah. two. So, our school, the cafeteria, dining hall, has a vegan station. Every once in a while, they have like black bean burgers or like veggie burgers. And the other day, I don't know if you eat there very often, but I do because I am vegan. The lady was like, oh, like we have black bean burgers today. They're actually vegan. And I was like, what, what do you this whole time? What do you mean actually vegan? <laughs> like I, this is the vegan station. Yeah, we just found out today that they've had eggs in them the whole time and I was like, why would you tell people that? What the? 
ignorance is bliss. I'm glad she told me, you know? I guess so. But at the same time, like, okay, yeah, like, I'm vegan by choice. I don't have any allergy, like, allergies to that stuff. But, like, if people did, if people did that is such a liability. That is so bad. Flagler. It's just, it's disappointing, especially because, like, if you look at a box on the allergen information, it says eggs. Yeah. Like, it's not that hard to just, just look at the box and be like, out. like, you don't even have to read through the entire ingredients list. Just the allergen information that's on the bottom, it's separate from everything else. I'm gonna send this eggs. link to this video to, like, the D Hall. I forget what his name, like, <laughs> Nick? the guy that, sh sure, you're on a first name base with him. Well, he followed me on Instagram. <laughs> okay, that's a whole nother video. No, the, like, the guy that runs the whole sh shebang amount oh. of So They're gonna be getting an angry email. The thing is about Flagler, thank you for that. <laughs> about Flagler, it prides itself in catering to people that have like special eating, like like anything, you know? Like catering towards people who have disabilities, like towards minorities, towards like, I don't know, if you're fucking vegan, like if you, if they want to take care of everybody. And so then like after being here for a year, I've come to see that that's not always the case. And no matter how hard they try, sometimes they just don't have the resources for it because we are such a small school. Hmm about the future. I'm planning out my classes to have next semester. I'm taking six classes again, but I'm getting to see my mom for the first time since November. Like I'm getting to, and like spend a, this is the first time I'll spend a prolonged amount of time with her since, you know, I moved out last summer. And I get to go visit my sister in San Francisco. I get to see the old friend that moved out back to Texas, the one that I mentioned earlier. I get to go to, to a completely different country for the first time. I didn't even leave the South until last summer. Yeah, so I'll have a lot of new experiences and a fresh slate once again. And I'm gonna keep growing out my hair because that makes me happy. This video has no fucking point. I started talking about like parties and boys and travel and the whack vegan station this year. Also, I'm sorry that I'm cursing so much, but yeah, I'm just gonna end this video before I start talking about like politics or you know Don McLean. There's no limit. Also, um, if you haven't already, you can go to Instagram and follow my new Instagram, or I'm calling it a studygram. It's where I put all stuff language related, tips on learning languages, explanations, questions. If you have questions, I will answer them. Or you can follow my regular Instagram at least Vega. Oh wait, I didn't mention the other one, it's Elise Speaks. Um, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to, I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday. I try to, if it don't, what are you gonna do about it? Okay, thanks for watching so much, I'll see you next Wednesday.